How's it going everybody? I am Dean with GTO and today I'm featuring a replay from Rhinoceros Unicornus, a subscriber replay in the 40 TP. So this is the Polish tier 6 medium tank and well, it's a vehicle which I have mentioned before in the past where I am I'm just not a fan of this tank in the slightest. I think it's probably one of the worst tier 6s in the game overall because well, if you compare this thing to just tier 6 in general, pretty much every tier 6 is better than it. And the only one that I could come up with that's potentially worse than this is the Churchill gun carriage. And that's a pretty low bar. And yes, I rate, I, I rate the Aerial V39 higher than this thing. Because the Aerial V39 at least had some alpha damage and the one 5mm gun was somewhat consistent and I think actually had better accuracy than this gun. So yeah. It's a pretty low bar, and this thing doesn't even meet it. <laughs> so, Rhinoceros here is playing on the western flank of the map. He's gradually moving forward, letting his knockers go up from time to time. And he's going to stop here and try and get some shots towards this Cromwell. And one thing I did notice over the course of this, uh, over the course of this replay, and I think he actually mentioned it briefly in his uh, on on uh, not next GG, what's it called on what replays whenever he upload this replay. Um, in the description I think he said that he used a lot of auto aim in this game and he does seem to get pretty lucky when it comes to auto aim overall because my experience with auto aim is if I don't like well if I'm not at point blank range right next to the target I'm not gonna hit them. That's pretty much how it works with me when it comes to auto aim and yeah his experience with auto aim appears to be very different because he actually is able to hit stuff with auto aim unlike me. <laughs> so He's been very cautious here. He does have binoculars. He does have uh, what's the food consumable even called for this? I have no clue. Bread with smalak, smalak, smalak. I don't, I don't know what that is. But yeah, he has, he has the premium food consumable. He has repair kit and med kit on the tank as well as binoculars. I imagine he probably has a rammer and gun lane drive on this thing because. I think this thing has a 2.9 second base aiming time, and I feel like gun lane drive is pretty much is pretty much like something you almost have to have on this tank. I really don't see too many people playing it without a gun lane drive because it just seems like such a necessary thing for this machine. And here he spots the SRV M4257 and stick one shot into it, and then it auto aims at the P43 miss and gets a shot in the P43. And then all well, his allies are getting some shots into him as well. And he gets pretty unlucky with this shot here. It clips the upper front plate. And one thing about the Italian mediums from tier 5 to 7 is unlike the tier 8 to 10, they actually have some armor. And they're actually able to bounce a surprising number of shots as I've learned in tier 7. And the tier 7 is actually a pretty fun vehicle to play. I actually like it quite a lot. And, well. He didn't even get a chance to get a second shot at the T30, at the T30 45. He just got nuked so quickly. And now he's focusing on the KV85 to try and remove him from the match. And, well, that's him gone too. And now he's done nearly 1300 spotting damage and over 1700 damage. And you can see there in the chat, the HWK is already declaring, we've won this game. Awesome. It's a bit early, I've got to say. Like, the enemy team still has 8 tanks remaining. And even though... Well, this team has a 4 tank advantage, well, make that a 5 tank advantage. It doesn't mean the uh, match is guaranteed to be a win, and they just lost 2 tier 8s within like a second of each other. The enemy team lost 1, they lost 2. And this is a tier 8 match if I didn't note that earlier. But here you can see what I mean by this tank, just, well, I'm not sure if I mentioned it already, but this tank is just catastrophically slow. It has no armor, well, at least in my experience, and... The gun is horrendously inconsistent and can't hit shit most of the time. And from this point forward, Rhinoceros here just is going to fire nothing but premium rounds. I really don't blame him because I don't think that shot would have hit if it hadn't been a premium round. I don't think it would have been fast enough reaching the target for that to hit. And, well, now he has to cross the open field, which is, as you can imagine, pretty fun in a vehicle which seems to top out like 30 kilometers an hour. And this is going down a hill, in which case it'll get up to like, what, like 38? We got up to 40, 42. What the hell, this is like the fastest this tank has ever gone. <laughs> so, the Stair Waffentrager is still very near the railroad. Well, railroad, is that the right way to call it? It's, it's still near the tracks. 
on the on the map and the HWK has now rushed the GW Panther but actually doesn't kill it immediately which was a surprise he, get, he gets one shot into it and the artillery lasts for far longer than I would have guessed because the Star Waffen Trigger actually starts moving towards the HWK in an effort to try and get rid of him the artillery takes a shot at the HWK and stuns the Star Waffen Trigger which is just bizarre and the GW Panther is finally removed and at this point, Rhinoceros is rushing towards the HWK, and this was a really, this was a really, that was a really dodgy uh, bit of driving there. <laughs> My experience from doing that is uh, usually I die. Rhinoceros doesn't seem to have the same luck as me. <laughs> he seems to be much more lucky when it comes to playing this machine. Like I would have died if I had done that, or or, or at least lost like 740 health. <laughs> so yeah, he's still at full health somehow even after that jump, and. He's managed to finish off the HWK 12, which is one tier 8 he's killed in a tier 6 machine, which is probably one of the worst tier, tier 6 machines overall in the game. Now, I didn't actually notice this immediately, but the Carnarvon Action X is actually looking the other direction and doesn't appear to have even noticed he's here. Which is kind of an interesting situation because he just gets a shot straight into, his, into the rear of the turret, takes a hit from the T20, which makes him fall back a little bit, and tries not to shot the Carnarvon Action X but gets a bit unlucky with that one. And now the Carnarvon starts looking towards him. I believe he's, yeah, he fires a shot and he actually bounces a hit from the Carnarvon Action Axe, which is just, that's a 1 in a million right there. 226 pound gun, bouncing off of this thing. Holy crap. <laughs> and he managed to finish off the Carnarvon Action Axe, because instead of turning the hull of this tank, the Carnarvon Action Axe just turned the turret, which was an, an interesting choice, especially considering what that tank is like just in general. And at that point, the T29 and the KB2 well, the KV-2 on this team and the T-29 on the enemy team both die pretty much simultaneously. And, well, the T-20 who was on the hill and had a complete advantage in terms of positioning, for some reason decides to sacrifice that completely. I'm really not sure what's going on here because that just seems bizarre. I really don't know why he just kind of just rushes towards Rhinoceros here and just kind of doesn't do anything. He shoots from the track, but... Yeah, he just kind of just drives towards him, and I don't know what his goal was here. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I actually want to say about this game is that game 100% was like a 1 in a million game. Like, that is a game that's not going to be repeatable in any shape or form. Like, doing over 3,200 damage in that tank is just insane. 4 kills as well, which is just awesome, and 1,300 assistance damage, and that was all in a tier 8 game, while bottom tier in arguably one of the worst overall tier 6s in the game. That's incredible. That is honestly just incredible. So, yeah, like, you should be pretty damn proud of that one, because I honestly think that game will pretty much permanently be in the top 1% for games in this tank. And like, I, I'd be surprised if there were many games that were higher damage or higher XP than that in this tank. And by the way, if you're wondering, that was over 1600 base XP in this tank. <laughs> I would have been very, very happy if I had a game like this in this tank. And like the closest I actually got to this here was like eleven 1 hundred XP. And that was like my first game in the tank. Literally like one of my first games in this machine was my best game. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just of course that was that always happens when it comes to like just vehicles that are bad. But yeah. Thanks very much to Rhinoceros Unicornus for sending that replay in. Uh, it was a really interesting game to watch, and I would honestly say you should be damn proud of that game because that game was just insane. <laughs> so, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one.